Hello everybody and welcome or welcome back to The Second Shelf and to uh, finally a video after two weeks of absence. Um, sorry about that. And I thought the best way, what I want to talk about it because it is Victober and I missed a big bunch of Victober videos uh, because I didn't film. So I at least can now film a Victober update. Um, I'm filming this on Saturday, so the video might go up on Saturday, but most likely it will be the Sunday video instead of the recent reads or the recent reads for Victober. So I finished uh, three books so far, which is not too bad. I would say three Victober books. Um, and the first one I finished was John Halifax Gentleman by Dina Maria Mullock, as she is referred to here. Mostly her name is um, uh, referred to as Dina Maria Mullock Crack. Craig, Craig, C R A I K, Craig. Um, but it's the same person, in case you are wondering. Um, this book was published in 1856, and I read it for uh, the prompt um, a book where class features strongly. I think it's prompt number. No, I have to check prompt number five. Yes, prompt number five. It was Rose's prompt from Skelly Dandling uh, about the books. I read this author before last year for Victober, uh, A Noble Life. Didn't quite work for me. Um, I, I think she's an interesting author um, because she is one of the few Victorian authors that I read uh, where disability features strongly in all of her books. Um, the central character in Noble Life uh, was a young man uh, with a severe disability, uh, couldn't really walk. And the character here, who is recounting the tale of John Halifax Gentleman, is also uh, a severe disability. We don't quite know what, uh, but that was the reason I picked uh, this author up last year um, and wanted to read more of her this year. Um, the story of John Halifax is a story about class because he is an orphan, kind of like, uh, you know, uh, a, 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 Charles a Charles Dickens figure. Uh, we learn about his background, background a little bit, but he is an upright, uh, hardworking young man when he comes to this family, um, uh, a, a Quaker family, able, what's his last name? Fletcher, I think, if I remember that. Yeah, Abel Fletcher, um, and his son, <coughs> Phineas, there's something wrong with this pronunciation, but <laughs> we'll we'll just we'll just roll with it. I I checked it before I filmed the video, and I already forgot. It's horrible. That's what you get when you don't film for two weeks. Anyway, so he is taken in. John is taken in by uh, Abel Fletcher, not as a as a son, but as a worker, and he works. The book is spanning. 40 years, almost a whole lifetime, he's working his way up or trying to work his way up to um, the new middle class, you know, industrial revolution, uh, people who are from not a, a noble background, but can still work their way up to at least some wealth. And so class uh, figures uh, uh, strongly in this book. Uh, like I said, the, the the tale of John Halifax is told by his friend, um, Abel Fletcher's son. I'm avoiding his name now. <laughs> Fletcher, let's call him Fletcher Jr. <laughs> um, and it's quite a, a chunky book, uh, 500 and something pages. And it's not that I didn't like it. I mean, it was well done and it had a nice flow to it. And um, um, Malok has a, a, a good way of dialogue writing and, you know, but it was just a little boring, I have to admit. I mean, I can deal with the, you know, um, it's very virtuous, of course, and very Victorian in that sense. You know, people are very noble, at least 
the hero, the, the, the hero and his friend Fletcher Jr. They are all dealing with their fate in a very noble way. Uh, so it's kind of, you know, that typical, yeah, virtue heavy Victorian book and I knew that before I was going in because Ross <laughs> warned me about it but that's okay but I have difficulties if I'm bored and I definitely was bored with this book there's nothing happening there is no no sense of urgency you know to pick it up and read it so it's more like a maybe if it was serialized you read a little episode of these people's lives and that's nice and then you forget about it so it it was okay but it was not a highlight of my victober uh, read so far unfortunately um the next book I read uh, for the prompt, um, Petra's prompt number four, read a Victorian first person narrative. And that was a reread for me. Um, and Bronte's The Tenant of Wiltfell Hall, published in 1848, and Bronte's second and also final novel because she died a year after publication. And it's one, if you follow my channel, you know that Wiltfell Hall is one of my favorite uh, Bronte novels and one of my favorite Victorian novels. Um, and it's told, uh, by the way, the, the um, uh, John Halifax also would also qualify for the first person narrative because it is told by Fletcher's Junior. <laughs> um, this is kind of a similar setup, uh, which I gather is maybe also um, a common Victorian setup that somebody in first person would recount the story of somebody else. And here um, we have uh, Gilbert Markham. Yeah, I'm bad with names. I know. Sorry about that. Um, uh, who lives in the countryside, kind of a, you know, low nobility and um, somewhere in the neighborhood, Wiltfell Hall, a young woman. Uh, as a tenant, the tenant of Wilfell Hall, Hester. And there's a, a young son, but it's unclear whether she's a widow and there are rumors in the village about her. Um, and Gilbert is quite drawn to her, but she kind of is also drawn to him, but not willing to accept. So it, there is a weird thing going on. The book is told in letters from Gilbert to his friend. So it's told in retrospect. He tells it 20 years after the events. Um, and then we have diaries from Helen in the middle. So it's like kind of a Russian doll structure, a, a, a tale within a tale within a tale. And slowly we learn about Helen's fate, her background, why she uh, is now living in Wiltfell Hall. Um, and if you haven't read it, I don't want to spoil it, but I really appreciated the the focus on this woman, even though it's told from except for her diary entries. She tells them herself, of course, and the, the, the frame of the book is uh, Gilbert telling uh, the story in letters. But it's one of the few Victorian novels that I've read, at least, where um, the, 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 there is a focus on a not-so-pleasant fate of a woman. That's all I'm going to say in order not to spoil you. And in a, not in a, in a judgmental way. So I really like Hester. I like the way the story is developing. Um, the, 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 the typical, of course, the typical themes of, you know, virtue and family and duty. Uh, but there's also quite some, um, yeah, criticism, you could say, about the church, because the pastor uh, in the little village is one of the people who is very, very um, judgmental about Hester. 
So it's it's quite interesting, I feel, to read a book where the the typical Victorian themes are, are presented, but in a different way. So I loved the reread uh, of this one, and it's still one of my absolute favorite Victorian novels. <coughs> Excuse me. Then the third book that I finished was for prompt number three, that is uh, Marissa's Prompt, a uh, book by a new-to-you author. And I chose uh, Mrs. Oliphant, Margaret Oliphant, and this book, Hester, published in 1883. Um, I wanted to read, have been meaning to read Margaret Oliphant last October and didn't get around to it. And I thought this setup uh, is <laughs> also kind of different. So I, I have all these books that have a different view or have a different aspect that I don't come across that often in Victorian literature, which can, which can also be because I haven't read that much Victorian literature. Mostly I read it in October. Um, so this is Catherine Vernon is the, the main character. She is a, a middle-aged, older woman. I think she's in her beginning 60s and she runs a bank. Yes, you heard that right. Uh, she didn't inherit it straight, for, uh, straight uh, forwardly, uh, but there were some shenanigans with the, uh, with an, uh, a cousin, and she took over. And she has been running this bank for decades. And then she has she's not married. She has no children now that she's older. The question of uh, who is going to inherit her position? There are two nephews. <clears throat> uh, which uh, one of which she really loves, and then there is this young woman Hester, um, whom she doesn't like for reasons that you will learn when you read the book. And then there is the whole, yeah, story uh, about who Hester really is who the two nephews, how they develop, and all around this premise of this very successful older woman, Catherine. I love this book. I thought it was really nicely done. It was entertaining. Um, again, it had your typical, what you expect from a Victorian novel in terms of themes and virtues and, you know. Um, but the fact that Catherine is such a different woman and a different has a, a, a completely different um, status, um, I thought was really interesting. And then you have a generational conflict. That's basically what it is uh, between Hester and Catherine and how that is resolved or not. And who of the nephews will finally, you know, be able uh, to get the the position. It it's a good story with a really exceptional premise, and it's uh, very nicely told. So this definitely won't be my last book uh, by Margaret Oliphant. So that was a success. There are two books uh, still that I'm still reading. Um, the first one, so fourth book, is. Uh, for prompt number two, uh, Kate, Kate's prompt, uh, Kate Howe, a book with a stranger or outsider. And she actually recommended this one. Um, and I've never heard of this author before. Can you see that? Goblin Market. Yeah, it's a bit not, not quite clear, but it's a beautiful cover. Goblin Market and Other Poems by Christina Rossetti. Um, this book was published in 1862. Um, and it's a collection of poetry. And I'm, as you know, if you follow my channel, I'm not big on poetry. So that was a reason to pick this up. Um, but also the way Kate talked about this longer poem, uh, it has been published separately, uh, also, uh, just wanted me, made me want to read it. And it is about two young sisters, Laura and Lizzie, and the, the goblin man. They're men, not, not really men, human men, but goblin men sed seducing, uh, trying to seduce them to buy fruit. 
Um, I'm reading this uh, with Terry from Miss Terry Reads, thankfully, because I'm, I mean, Victorian po poetry. Poetry is not my first thing. I don't know much about it. And Victorian poetry, not at all. I read uh, Elizabeth Barrett Browning last year and really liked it, by the way. Uh, but I have no knowledge. So, so far, I'm. Uh, we have a check-in um, tomorrow on Sunday, uh, and I'm about halfway through, and I'm really enjoying it. It's a it's a, a poem that I can understand because it just tells a story, which is always easier for me. So this is um, a, a book for uh, the prompt outsider, and the last book is also a buddy read. It's for Katie's prompt book that features the new woman, and that is for me a whole new topic. I have not really read uh, or thought about that that concept of the new woman in the Victorian age. I mean, Catherine in um, Hester, uh, Catherine Vernon certainly qualifies, and Hester as well as the new woman, because it's the woman who is not your typical housewife. I mean, upper class, we're talking women working class always had to work, uh, but had a, has a career of some sort. Um, and I'm reading, uh, together with Joe Smith, I'm reading Jill uh, by Amy Dillwyn, which was published in 1884. And it's about this young woman, who uh, Jill, who doesn't like um, her father's new wife, and that's <laughs> vice versa. She's treated very badly and she runs away to become a housemaid, a, a lady's maid. And she really thinks about it, how, what, what, uh, uh, what ha does she have to offer in terms of capability and, and expertise? Uh, because she has no schooling really. Uh, but she speaks a lot of languages and then she was thinking about how she can improve uh, the, the expertise that she needs for being a lady's maid. So that's very interesting. We had our first check-in um, earlier this week, um, and uh, we're now um, we're now about a third in. So I'm really really enjoying that one, and we will finish. I, I think both books, this one and uh, Jill, um, I will finish still in October. So this was my kind of. If this video goes up on Sunday, kind of recent reads, Victober recent reads. Uh, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, as always, I'm looking very much forward to your comments. Let me know about your Victober reads if you're participating. And I'll talk to you all soon in the next one.